Hello and welcome back. On this episode we're gonna go on with the restoration of an old water pump. You may remember from previous episodes that we managed to get it running. If you haven't watched them I would recommend that you go and see those first. As a quick reminder, after cleaning the path, we mounted the engine on some massive silent blocks and we got things ready. I was concerned about the condition of the water pipe, so I wanted to spend as little money as possible. Fortunately, after sorting out some minor issues, we got the engine running and pressure was building up, so that was a good sign. So overall it was a success. The pump needs about 30 minutes to build enough pressure to pump the water to the house, but then afterwards, in 2-3 hours, the deposits were full. So now I could spend some extra time and effort. The first thing that needed sorting out was the exhaust. You may remember that it was extremely noisy, that's because it didn't have any sort of muffler or silencer or anything at all. It was just a free exhaust. But this annoying situation is about to change because I have a plan. So I'm gonna replace this free exhaust with a resonator I bought on Amazon for 27 euros. It's not cheap, I was expecting much better quality for that price, but it will do the job. I've also ordered 2 meters of this zinc uh, piping. This is the design I had in my mind. We will see how well it turns out. But prior to mounting it to the engine, I need to improve the finishings on that silencer. It's just unacceptable. So with my Dremel tool and some patience, I polished those horrible weldings. Mounting it to the engine as it was would definitely limit the engine performance. Well, this is a bit better, but still not quite there. So, back to work. And this is the final result compared to the original state. And this silencer is just an empty cylinder. There's absolutely nothing in there that acts as a resonator or anything at all. So, for 27 euros, that is a ripoff. This is how I originally mounted it to the engine, although I'd later realized it interfered with the starter motor solenoid, so I had to flip it around. But well, thanks to this flexible exhaust pipe I bought, that was a pretty easy job. As a gasket, I'm using some silicone heat resistant sealant, and it worked just fine. Now the silencer was slightly interfering with the injector pipe, so I just bend it slightly with whichever tool I had lying around. And now with a 13 spanner, I bolt it back on. Just making sure the silencer doesn't interfere with the starter motor solenoid anymore. I will now wrap the exhaust with some ceramic insulators to prevent burns. This sequence is one minute long, so bear with me or skip it. To lock the exhaust pipe in place, I used this clamp, and it worked just fine. I finally reconsidered my initial plan, and I will not be mounting a muffler on the roof. That is because the pipe is not long enough, and the roof is in a pretty bad shape. So I will mount it on a concrete block, so you will see later. 
You may remember that another problem I was facing is that the oil cap is vented and at full throttle it was splashing out a lot of oil. You can see the problem is quite bad. Absolutely everything is full of oil, including the injector return pipe and the air filter. So I ordered uh, the appropriate oil according to my climate and the manual. It is a high detergency oil specially designed for heavy duty machinery. So now we're ready to fire the engine. This engine does not have any sort of decompressor, so you need to rotate it until it's into the, in the right spot to manually crank it. That's the spot I'm referring to. And indeed, the throttle is still a piece of string. With this setup you do not really need the ear defenders, so that's pretty good. It's now time to build a bridge over that little stream. This way I will be able to carry the wheelbarrow all the way to the shed. This stream is normally dry, although never underestimate water. I will now leave you with a sequence of me constructing this small bridge with concrete blocks.
Et voilà, it's definitely not pretty, although it's effective. There's still some parts of the path which are pretty bad, but well, step by step. Welcome to the jungle. The idea behind this design is that the concrete blocks allow water to get through and the structure is dug into the terrain in this V-shape. Like when building a wall, make sure the block edges do not see each other. This will give the structure a bit of an extra rigidity. I'm a chemist and this is my first bridge, so there's not much more you can tell really. The roof has plenty of leaks, and well, you can tell, there's a forest growing on it. Most of the roof tiles were just broken and I had to dam them. It's looking a bit mediocre, mainly because I have no idea on roof building, and secondly, because the original tiles were wider than the ones I had lying around. This roof will require some further TLC in the future. This is the final result. There's a chance that it leaks more than before. But well, overall you cannot argue it's better than it was before. I didn't really want to, but at the end I ended up applying some glyphosate. Otherwise the jungle would just take over pretty soon, so well, just make sure you check the weather forecast before applying any herbicide. And dilute it according to the manufacturer's specifications. So coming up, I've ordered the parts for the water pump bleeding system although I haven't received them yet, so that's for another episode. I will also be applying some automation on this project using radio frequencies. I've checked the height profile and it looks pretty decent, so hopefully we will be able to control the engine from the house and kill it from there when the water deposits are full without having to rush to the shed. That's all for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.